With 12 games on tonight's slate for Daily Fantasy Baseball, we have got a lot of fantastic options, both for stacking and for pitching. And our job is to decide which options have the ability to separate from the pack when there are so many good options on the table. And I do think there are a couple of pitchers, three or four, who can give you maybe 60 or so points, kind of like Aaron Nola for last night. I think we got guys who can do that, but also some stacks that, to me, have better upside than the rest. So we're going to break down what those options are, what to do with them for tonight, and how to fit all those high salary options in uh, within your FanDuel lineups. Let's dive on in now and get you ready for Tuesday night's slate. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down tonight's 12-game main slate with locks set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Weather notes on this Tuesday slate in Pittsburgh for the Pirates and the A's. Winds are out to center at 11 miles per hour. I would bump up bats a bit there, but... Would note there is a pretty fine pitcher in that game as well. In Cleveland, for the Guardians and the Red Sox, winds are in from center at 12 miles per hour. Would downgrade bats there. There is a chance of rain in Atlanta for the Braves and the Mets. Looks like there are thunderstorms. So I'll check back on the timing of that later on. Then finally, there's a chance of rain earlier in the day at Coors Field for the Rockies and the Giants. Should clear out by first pitch, but at least worth noting, there is something in the area at Coors for tonight. Should be good to go regardless. We'll dive on into the pitching options, let you know who stands out most to me here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up later on today, we'll have our breakdown of PGA DFS for the RBC Canadian Open via myself and Brandon Gadula breaking down the top DFS plays in each salary tier on FanDuel for that event. To get that and all of our shows as they are posted, make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. Have you ever started a player in your fantasy football lineup who scores three points while someone on your bench puts up 20? Well, with FanDuel's NFL Best Ball Drafts, you don't have to worry about that. Draft your team, and each week, the highest scoring lineup from your roster will be used as you battle for first place all season long. Leagues can be free to play or for money and range from 3 to 12 players. The NFL season will be here before you know it, so head over to FanDuel today and get in on the action. Eligibility restrictions apply. Pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate. Mitch Keller comes in with the highest salary on FanDuel at $11,300. Kevin Gosman is 11-1. He is facing Hunter Brown. Hunter Brown is next up in salary at 10-3. Bryce Elder, 10,000. Logan Gilbert, 98. With James Paxton, 94. Shane Bieber facing James Paxton, 92. Lucas Giolito, 9,000. With Freddie Peralta, Kyle Gibson, Tony Gonsolin, Joe Musgrove, and Dane Dunning as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, based on those names... I guess you could probably guess who will be at the top of our list, especially if you know who is facing whom, because Mitch Keller has been phenomenal, electric so far this year, and he's facing the A's at home. So if you're looking for like a quote unquote, no brainer option for today, I feel like it's got to be Keller. Don't need to hear a whole lot more than that. He is the top guy in the slate. Keller this year is a 3.25 ERA, which might actually sell him a bit short. His skill interactive ERA is 3.10. His uh, expected ERA is actually a bit below that as well. He has let up a 31% hard hit rate on top of a 30% strikeout rate. All those are very, very good numbers. And he takes those numbers and puts them in a plus matchup for tonight. He's facing the A's, who have an 83 WRC plus against righties in the current active roster with a 132 ISO. Their strikeout rate is 25% as well. So combine that all together, I've got Keller projected for 8.3 strikeouts here. That ranks second on tonight's slate behind just Kevin Gosman, a tiny hair behind him. But I like Keller and his matchup a lot more. So I'm going to put Keller at the top of my list as a result here. 11-3 is a lot for sure, especially on a course field slate, but still willing to pay that. I think there are some value stacks we could potentially check out later on. So um, I would like to get to Keller if I can. I think for the second slot, you could justify any of Kevin Gosman, Hunter Brown, or Logan Gilbert for that slot. All those guys are in pretty difficult matchups, but they're all very good pitchers who get a lot of strikeouts. I'm going to go Gilbert here because his salary is lowest of this bunch, to be fully honest, but 
I'm not going to push back on any of the other guys if you are drawn toward them based on your process. Gilbert gets the Padres, which is not a, a fun spot given the talent they have on that roster. But they will strike out 24% strikeout rate against righties. That's higher than the matchup we get for either Gosman or Brown by a couple of percentage points. Gilbert also has not had great results. His ERA is 4.08. He just let up five earned runs last week. So I get why his salary is lower, but his upside is very, very good. Across the full season, Gilbert has a 29% strikeout rate with a 4% walk rate. He has also started to slowly throw his new splitter a bit more, and he's had some big strikeout performances recently while doing that. He has had 10 and 9 strikeout games within his past five starts. That nine strikeout game was on the road against the Braves. So he has proven he can handle a difficult offense on the road, which is what he gets here. Gilbert does let up too much hard contact, which is why you see that ERA being where it is. And that's why like Keller more, despite the salary gap, because Keller is awesome in that department. But Gilbert can pop. Salary of 98 is very reasonable. I am very fine with him. But again, I also would not blame you if you want to go with Gosman or Brown instead, because both those guys, very defensible. I wouldn't expect Brown to be very popular for tonight. I think he probably should be, personally, based on uh, what I'm seeing. So I don't think Gilbert will either, honestly, given that he's an underdog. But I think both those guys worth considering, especially given they have a bit lower salaries than Gosman and Keller and probably not going to see a lot of eyes go their way. Now, you could also save a lot of salary. And dip down for tonight because there is a value guy who we've talked about a couple of times recently. That's Clark Schmidt, who is obviously in a dangerous park. because He's at home at Yankee Stadium for tonight, but I like the rest of what Schmidt offers. He's facing the White Sox at Yankee Stadium for tonight. The White Sox are healthier now, so looking at their full season numbers will probably undersell them. But they're also not a juggernaut by any means right now. And Schmidt is a guy who can get strikeouts. We need strikeouts with how high scoring this slate could be. He has a 26% strikeout rate for the full season. He had seven on the road last week. And that was his fourth start this year getting seven plus strikeouts. We also saw Schmidt get good results in that seven strikeout game, which is good because he's been slowly trying to bring that ERA down all year. It is high due to all the hard contact he's allowed, but in all honesty, it's largely just because he's gotten beaten up in two separate starts, but those two starts were against the Rangers and the Rays, two tremendous offenses. The White Sox, again, are getting better, but they're not the Rangers or the Rays just yet. I have Schmidt projected for 5.9 strikeouts. That is pretty far below Keller, Gosman, and the others, but he is within one strikeout of Gilbert. So if you want to go nutso at Coors Field or you want to load up another bats elsewhere, I really don't mind Schmidt for a salary of $7,800. I think that the upside is there. I think that he's better than what his results have been so far. Don't hate the matchup. So I do think the increased flexibility there is worth it. And I would at least give some thought to Schmidt. Again, preference for me is to spend up to get the upside of Gilbert or Keller, but don't mind spending down on Schmidt if you can't quite jam in all the bats you really do want. That's pitching. And again, a lot of names to consider there. Similar kind of sentiment with stacking, but it's also similar in that there are there is one stack that really does stand out and potentially a second one that is on another tier above the other ones for tonight. The top one is going to be the Giants at Coors Field. That is the biggest park factor boost you can get. And they're facing to Nelson Lamette. It is a great spot to stack them, even with the salary bumps they get via Coors Field. Lamette made his first start back uh, in the rotation last week. He let up five earned runs across three innings. He had six hard hit balls on 12 balls in play, and that came against Arizona. That's not a bad offense. I definitely think that they're fun, and we'll talk about them in a second, actually. But they're also not superstars, and the Giants, to me, are a step above that offense. They have a 111 WRC plus against righties with a 184 ISO and a 39% fly ball rate. And we put that instead of in the black hole of offense that is San Francisco, putting in Denver, which is pretty sweet. So I don't see a lot to hate here. I think the Giants should be our top stack of the night. And I feel very good in putting them there. And they're also getting back some pretty serious firepower on this slate. Both Ayero Estrada and Jock Peterson are expected to come off the IL tonight. Neither guy comes with a low salary. This is not a spot where you're getting them at like minimum. Um, it was anticipated they'd be back here. So, you know, 
we're not catching FanDuel sleeping, but they've got clear paths to upside. Uh, other guys who have lower salaries who would be pretty fun if they do play are Lamont Wade, Mitch Hanniger, Blake Sable. It's not really sure who will start given the guys are getting back for tonight. So if you get one of those lower salary guys in there for tonight, definitely be okay with them because uh, there are a lot of guys in this team with juice, but not really sure what the lineup will look like given how many bodies they're getting back for this late. So the Giants to me, the top stack pretty definitively for tonight. Number two will be Arizona. And I was kind of just poo-pooing them a bit, but it was more so to say the Giants are a really good offense and Arizona is about average and they're in a great matchup for today. Based on Jake Irvin, Irvin is still trying to find his footing in the big leagues. He's let up four earned runs in three of his six starts. And some of those poor outings have come against lesser offenses. And although Arizona is not quite San Francisco in terms of offense, they're also not a lesser offense. Again, 102 WRC plus against righties. They're about average, which is good. The one downside here in terms of stacking, I feel great about the matchup against Irvin. The one downside is the catching situation because the Diamondbacks or the, the Nationals, I should say, have led up the fewest stolen bases in all of baseball. That's part of the appeal with Arizona is they have so many guys who will run and they lose that appeal a bit here. I think that Jake McCarthy will still run. Corbin Carroll will still run. But the more you know secondary base dealer is probably not going to get going in this series. But I think they can get there via the bats, though. Irvin has a 6.00 expected ERA, plenty of hard contact and fly balls. So even if it's not ideal, I still think it's the number two stack of the night. So to me, it's Giants 1, Arizona 2, despite the fact we might not get a lot of steals out of the Diamondbacks uh, in this series. An underrated guy here within Arizona is Paven Smith. He doesn't have the best overall numbers, but there is some pop. He has a 190 ISO against righties, good plate discipline numbers, not a super high salary, 29. I would not overlook him within stacks. Jake McCarthy, too, I think is kind of the one guy who will run on anyone. He has like... 47 steals in the past week. I think that's uh, rounding up a bit, but um, definitely willing to run there. So McCarthy is a, val- a salary saver. Payment Smith is salary saver. Might want to use them within your Arizona stacks. If you want some increased flexibility. Now the true value stack for tonight to me is the Cubs. They're facing Tyler Anderson and they're not like a value value stack where everyone's below 3000, but nobody here is super high salaried. And I do think it's a good spot to stack the Cubs. So if you need some increased flexibility to get to Keller while still getting exposure to Arizona and San Francisco, I think that the Cubs could be that route. Anderson's still trying to figure things out the year, get this ship ready, get back to where he was last year. We're up to a 10 start sample now. Anderson's ERA still 5.47. His expected ERA is 5.00. And the adjustments he has made to try to get this thing figured out have not worked yet. He's been th- throwing more changeups his past seven outings. And in that time, his skill interactive ERA actually goes up to 5.82 with a 14% strikeout rate. So that hasn't fixed it. He let up six earned runs to the White Sox last time out. And he has generally been better at home but he has had blowups there. It's also a specifically bad matchup for him facing the Cubs because they strike out a lot against lefties, but he doesn't get strikeouts. When the Cubs make contact, they tend to crush it because they have a 126 WRC plus against lefties with a 187 ISO. So I'd be okay stacking against Anderson normally, but especially when you put him against a team that makes a lot of hard contact when they hit the ball, that's, pretty tough. And I think the Cubs are pretty appealing here. And again, do bring us some value if we're trying to jam in uh, the other high salaried stacks or pitchers for tonight. Jan Gomes could be one of those value plays, not a sexy name, not a super fun name, but making plenty of hard contact this year with an 11.1% barrel rate. He's hitting lefties super well. Even as Gomes has gotten older, he has still maintained the ability to hit lefties. He's $2,600. He's probably going to bat seventh, and I can live with that, honestly. I would also buy into say a Suzuki at 29 as another value play here on this Cubs team. So between Suzuki, Gomes, McCarthy, Paven Smith, and then hopefully some Giants guys, I think he can get to Keller with the Giants. Think he can, not guaranteed, but uh, based on the initial glimpse at this slate, I think he can make it work. So that will be the goal for me tonight is to jam in uh, Arizona, jam in the Giants and jam in um, uh, jam in Mitch Keller 
via some decisions via the value plays there and uh, the Cubs as well. Things to watch for tonight. The Rockies likely to face Sean Mania as the bulk reliever for the Giants. They've struggled a lot against lefties. Their numbers there are real bad, but Mania still letting up a, a lot of hard contact and it is Coors Field. So I think you have to consider the Rockies, but not going to put them above the Diamondbacks, not going to put them above the Cubs. They, to me, would be the number four sack on the slate. The Pirates are facing the A's again. Uh, James Caprellian has been okay since rejoining the rotation, but letting up a lot of fly balls. And then, of course, the Pirates get to face that bullpen. The wind is out for today. So the Pirates in the consideration set, but just a pretty loaded slate here keeps them a little bit lower on the list. Finally, I do like some of what Luke Weaver is doing. He's getting some strikeouts. His expected ERA much better than his results. The problem is he's letting up way too many fly balls to pitch at Great American Ballpark. He's facing the Dodgers today. That's not an ideal combo. So I might wind up lower on the Dodgers than than others simply because I prefer the Giants in terms of a high salaried stack and do like Arizona a lot. But uh, the Dodgers, a legit option for sure. If you are looking for a one-off and you already have in some guys from the Giants and Diamondbacks and you want a one-off with upside, the, the Dodgers will have that for sure because of the park, because of the fly balls Weaver allows, that combo does make them appealing, even if I'm a little bit lower on them than others may be for today. Let's finish up with the dinger calls for tonight. We get Jock Jams back, uh, I think. we I assume Jack Peterson back for the slate and, and we get him at Coors Field. So contractually, I am obligated to pick Jock Peterson here. Returning from the IL at Coors Field, it's Jock Peterson. So Jock Peterson, the boring home run call for today. On this Dinger Tuesday, I should note. The fun one is Paven Smith. Uh, I mentioned before that he's had decent power numbers against righties. Decent is not enough to make him like a great uh, Dinger call, but does put the ball in the air, does make pretty hard contact, is facing Irvin who lets up a lot of fly balls and hard contact. Not a bad park for home runs either in Washington. So we'll go with Jock Peterson and Paven Smith as our two home run calls for this blessed Dinger Tuesday. That's all the time that we got here for today on the solo shot. But as mentioned, we are back later on today talking some PGA DFS with Brandon Gadula. That is right here in the same podcast feed, the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed. So go subscribe to that wherever you get your podcasts. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Wednesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.